Greetings Viceroys! It's been a long time since my last video, I hope you're all well. And for those of you watching me on Twitch, I appreciate it, I appreciate it a lot. Today we're going to discuss Glade events. We're going to talk about specifically what resources do you want to open Glades? What resources do you want to solve Glade events with? And we will go through every single Glade event in the game and talk about what you need to solve it, what you can expect, which ones are threatening. I will rate every Glade in the game into either good, bad, or ugly. And I want you to take that rating with a grain of salt. It is intended to be kind of silly on purpose because I think there's not a whole lot of reason to rate Glade events, but I want to give a general idea of how threatening they are or how lucrative they are. And that's why I came up with the good, bad, ugly scale. Uh, we will go through all the dangerous ones first and then all the forbidden ones. And we have a new spreadsheet and I will make this one available. Let's take a look over here. 23 dangerous glades, 14 forbidden glades, because that's all there is in the game, 37 total. Now these combinations of resources show up on glade events a lot. Resin, oil, scroll, tea, incense shows up on four dangerous glades, two forbidden glades, and a few exceptions here. Like for instance, dark gate has four of these, but is missing resin. Destroyed Cage of the War Beast has four of these, is missing scrolls. Fallen uh, Beaver Traders, Fallen Harpy Scouts, etc., whatever it is, is missing scrolls. So there's actually quite a bit, a bit more. Like this resource cluster shows up a lot more than, it, than the four and two that you see here. So this is fairly common. Combustible, and by combustible, I mean oil, coal, sea marrow, and planks. This shows up in seven Dangerous Glade events, two Forbidden Glade events. Copper Bar reeds and coats and also Crystal Dew, which I just kind of abbreviated that to bars. This shows up in three Dangerous Glades, one Forbidden Glade. So this is an important resource cluster. This is one that you really kind of do want one of these resources in order to solve these Glade events with. Although typically in these cases, you can do the left solve on the Glade event and it doesn't cost you any resources at all. But I do value these quite a bit because the solves that take them are actually pretty lucrative. Amber and Provisions. There's three Dangerous Glade events that take Amber plus Provisions, like it requires both. Uh, but all of these, you can do the left solve and it doesn't cost you anything. This doesn't show up on forbidden glades at all tools training gear and stone this shows up on two dangerous glades four forbidden glades so you really do see this a lot more like stone is a little bit more valuable on your forbidden glades actually than your dangerous ones tools pack of building materials this shows up twice in dangerous glades once in forbidden glades so pack of building materials isn't the most useful thing uh, but it does show up as an alternative to tools and of course like tools if you just look at tools alone tools shows up a lot all over the place. And we'll look at the other sheet to see the exact breakdown of tools. And then finally, we've got building materials, as in plank, fabric, and bricks. This shows up on four different Dangerous Glade events. And it's worth noting that when this does show up on Dangerous Glade events, it actually, fabric and bricks are going to be your most efficient solve compared to planks. Except if you're doing the merchant shipwreck, then actually they're all kind of the same. In fact, planks is maybe slightly better. But if you have something like the, and, and plank shows up in combustible as well. So if you have something like the lumber mill, that actually will unlock a lot of glade solves for you, which is another point in favor of the lumber mill. It was already a good building, but the fact that you can use planks on quite a number of glade solves makes the lumber mill really even better. That's it. Let's get into the glade events themselves, and then we'll get back to our tier list for resources, and we'll do a little bit more of a deep dive into which resources you want and why. All right, here we have the Altar of Decay, and the threat on this thing is hostilities increased by 15 points for every blight rod cess during the storm, which is not terribly threatening. It's it's okay. It's okay. And on the left side solve, we have plus 45 points of hostility for every wildfire essence stored in the settlement's warehouse, which is interesting. If you're starting off the game and you haven't spent any of your six wildfire essence, you can expect this to be 270 points of hostility, which is, you know, close to 300 close to 300, which is something you get for many Glade events straight up, is 300. This takes combustible. You'll see this is a fairly common set of inputs, which we will analyze later. These are all fairly accessible. You start the game with 28 coal, and you get fairly decent rewards for doing this. I think Crystal Dew shows up a lot on the Altar of Decay. I could be misremembering that, but it does seem to show up quite a bit on these sort of things. This is a decent solve. If you need to, you can move your Wildfire Essence out of the warehouse just by putting down some small hearths right away. Even if you don't completely build the small hearth, as soon as the Wildfire Essence leaves your warehouse with a worker, as soon as that worker walks out of your warehouse with the Wildfire Essence, then you will get the Hostility Drop. On the right-hand solve, you've got Perform Ritual. This is a Corruption. And it takes the very standard affair of Resin, Oil, or one of these three luxuries. And it kills someone, which you don't usually want to have happen. And what does this get you? So this is the Harmony, or sorry, the Altar of Decay. And it gives you 
decorations, harmony decorations, and also minus 20 hostility for every villager who has left or died this settlement, counting the one that you sacrificed for this. Now, this is obviously pretty powerful. If you have five people leave, that's minus 100 hostility. That's as good as the monastery. And sometimes you will want this. My problem with this is typically you don't want to be sacrificing people. There are situations where this is useful, but not most of the time. Overall, and this is probably going to be a contentious opinion, I think the Altar of Decay is a bad Glade event. And keep in mind, when I say bad, I don't mean that it's bad, I mean it's more kind of mid than anything. It's neither good nor terrible. In this case, it's almost good. This Glade event is good a decent amount of the time, but I don't like the fact that it kills someone. I, I'm not a huge fan of the Altar of Decay. I think if you stack this up against something like the Harmony Spirit Altar, the Harmony Spir Spirit Altar does a lot more for you and counts as an Empathy Solve, which is quite a bit more important than Corruption. So Altar of Decay, this is an okay Glade event, and it has some very standard solves. Like, you're very, very likely to have something you can solve this with. People overvalue the hostility reduction that you get from the altar in many cases. It's not going to make you win the game faster. Typically, you don't need this unless you're really struggling with a modifier like Ancient Battleground. That's your Altar of Decay. Here we have the Harmony Spirit Altar. The bad thing on this is minus 5 to Global Resolve, which is fairly threatening. You certainly don't want that going into the storm. Like, you typically have to solve this, or it could get awkward going into the storm. The left solve counts as loyalty, and it takes a combustible, and all resolve drops 500% faster, which is not terrible. If you're solving this outside of the storm, it's usually not a problem. And if you're solving this inside the storm, well, it may also not be a problem. This is relatively not that punishing, so this left solve is certainly viable. On the right side, you can spend 15 amber, and one of these standard oil resin plus three luxuries, you can spend one of these to get the Harmony Spirit Altar, which counts as Harmony Decorations and gives you two Global Resolve for every single service building in your settlement. This is pretty darn good, because if you have two service buildings, that's four Global Resolve stacks. That's going to help you out quite a lot. This is the solve you want to aim for, but 15 Amber can be fairly expensive, especially early in the game. If you can't afford it, you may have to burn this down, which is okay. If you end up burning it down, this is not the worst solve either, since it's fairly simple to do. Overall, Harmony Spirit Altar is a little bit threatening, but it's a good enough building that I'm going to call this a good Glade event. Usually it's something you want to see. Here we have the Rain Spirit Totem. The threat here is that it's going to destroy all of your roads and villagers move 30% slower, which is not terrible. If you've spent resources on roads, which usually I don't, you can destroy your roads yourself to get your refund before it destroys them for you. Minus 30% villager speed, it is annoying, but it's not going to break your game, right? It's not going to end your run. On the left-hand side, we've got Combustible, which shows up a lot, especially in Dangerous Glades. And you get a little bit of rewards for this. Not great, but a little bit. And on the right-hand side, you can spend, again, a very standard fare of resin oil or one of these three luxuries, and you plus 300 hostility, and you get the converted rain totem, which decreases hostility by 50. I think this is strictly not as good as global resolve stacks. That is an opinion I've come to more recently. I think hostility reduction, while it is nice, I would almost always rather have global resolve stacks. And this is no exception for glade events when it comes to the totem, totem of denial. I would rather see that than the rain spirit totem. And the totem of denial doesn't give you a plus 300 hostility. What's annoying about this is if you want to be gaining reputation during the Drizzle Clearance, it's going to be very difficult to do that while you're operating at plus 300 hostility, unless you have foxes, and that's why foxes are so good. But typically, it's going to hinder your ability to gain reputation during, this, during the Drizzle Clearance, and you can't really do this during the Storm, so this is somewhat punishing. And the reward, minus 50 hostility, while it is good, it's not going to help you win the game faster, so this can be awkward. And in the late game, I actually frequently find myself burning it down, just to save myself the hassle of going through plus 300 hostility and losing time. Overall, Rain Spirit Totem, this is a bad Glade event. It's not terribly threatening, and there are very common ways to deal with this, so it's not going to hurt you, usually. But it's not what you're looking for, either, when you're opening, down, opening Glades. And here we have the Totem of Denial, not to be confused with the Rain Spirit Totem. They look pretty similar, and they both have the option to burn it down on the left-hand side. What this one does for its bad effect is it kind of flips the season, so... The Drizzle and Clearance season are half as long, and the Storm season is uh, twice as long, which is pretty bad. You don't want the Drizzle and Clearance season to be half as long. The Storm season being twice as long is kind of whatever, but the Drizzle and Clearance lasting half as long 
means you are going to lose time your hostility is going to go up faster year by year try to avoid this bad effect when possible and doing the left solve a burn down very combustible very common very standard you get to pretty decent resources here this is okay you can do this but really when you see the totem of denial what you want to do is the right hand solve and this takes any luxury which is by the way this is the only combination like this there's another one that is no training gear, but otherwise any of these five resources. And then there's also the Temple of the Sun, which takes like ale, wine, incense, and uh, some other random things, but it doesn't take these three. This is the only Glade event where you'll see every luxury resource show up as an alternative. So you just need any luxury resource for Totem of Denial. And typically those are going to be incense or tea, or maybe scrolls, and maybe training gear. You're not going to use ale or wine, really. Uh, and what this does is it gives you three global resolve stacks, I believe. And you see three, but yeah, three, it definitely is at least three. And three is a lot of global resolve stacks. That's as good as a tavern. And you don't even have to put people in this totem to, to operate it like you do the tavern. So totem of denial is extremely good. This is, it's much better than the minus 50 hostility variant, which is the rain spirit, rain spirit totem. You want totem of denial. Um, and the bad effect for working on this also is just you can't sacrifice, which is kind of whatever. Like you could be working on this during the storm and potentially it's going to be fine. Like obviously for me right now, I'm in the red everywhere, but that's because I'm doing a training expedition run and just opening glades like crazy. But typically not being able to sacrifice is a pretty mild effect. It really doesn't matter. So um, you do need to watch out for this bad, the, for this threat. It is very threatening, but because you're getting global resolve stacks on this thing for not too much input, uh, I think that Totem of Denial is certainly a good Glade event. One of my favorites when I see it. All right, here we have Forgotten Temple of the Sun. The threat here is that it's going to destroy all of your pack of goods, amber, and ancient tablets, which is frustrating. And I think that does count provisions as well, if I'm not mistaken, for pack of goods. So you may need to summon a trader and dump all of your goods on that trader if this bad effect is about to happen. But you can see, okay, maybe that's not so bad because at least you can trade your goods for something of value before this before this takes them away. And you, this only takes three minutes to solve compared to most dangerous glade events. So this is significantly faster. It's going to take less worker time than usual. On the left hand side, we actually see a very uncommon palette of resources you can spend here: ale and wine, which are otherwise fairly uncommon, but they do show up in Forgotten Temple of the Sun. 30 incense, 30 oil. We see incense and oil all over the place. And this is an, another reason, Forgotten Temple of the Sun, why incense and oil are so good, but why they're so prominent, they show up all over the place. Uh, six pack of trade goods. If you have it, then this is kind of worth it, but you might not have the pack of trade goods. But if you do, then feel free to use this. And wildfire essence, two wildfire essence. You can spend two of your initial six wildfire essence to do this solve, and that's okay. And you can kind of loan it in a sense and then get it back from a quest later on and still have enough wildfire essence to put down your two additional hearths. Or maybe you can just go with only one additional hearth if you never find your wildfire essence. So there's a lot of options to solve this. Incense and oil looking very good, but this is a pretty easy solve. On the right-hand side, you've got 15 building mats, 15 tools for half a victory point, some amber, which is exactly the same pattern we've seen before in another glade event. So this is, this is feasible, it's feasible, but probably you wanna go for the left solve and get the three global resolve stacks if they're here. Forgotten Temple of the Sun, overall, this is a pretty good glade event because this threat is not terrible and both of these are viable solves. So Forgotten Temple of the Sun, this is a good glade event. Here we have the Forsaken Crypt. The bad effect on this is it's going to destroy your amber and wine, which you can avoid by summoning a trader and dumping all of your amber and wine on that trader. And speaking of doing that, if you go for the left-hand solve, you're going to face a minus six penalty to global resolve for every 10 amber in the settlement's warehouse. This is pretty steep. You want to get down below 10 amber most of the time when you see this, and you should summon a trader and give them all of your amber until you're below 10, until this is no longer a problem. This also takes 30 planks, 15 bricks, 15 fabric. So you want to be spending bricks and fabric on this when possible. But if you have something like the lumber mill, the planks are a perfectly valid option. And this actually gives you planks back for solving it in this case. So I may want to spend planks anyways. On the right hand side, we have any luxury except training gear plus amber or copper bar crystal dew. And that gives us a victory point and an empathy solve. This is okay. There's better ways to get victory points out of dangerous glades but this is a pretty solid one like this is relatively cheap if you think of it this way like 30 wine and six crystal dew this is another testament to why incense and tea are so strong oil and resin are missing from this one and also you want to be using crystal dew copper bar of course because 
six crystal dew is significantly less value than 15 amber. So I do rate amber crystal dew and copper bars reasonably well because of this glade event, in particular crystal dew and copper bar. Overall, the Forsaken Crypt is a good glade event. It's not terribly threatening, and it leaves you a lot of options to solve it. Here is the open vault. The threat here is it's going to kill everything within 20 tiles, which to like kind of put that in perspective, I'll zoom out a little bit. It's actually pretty far. If this is like the first glade event you open up, for instance, that could be in range of your hearth. That would be very awkward. So this can be very threatening. If it's way out in the middle of nowhere, then maybe it's not, but probably you do need to worry about this. And either way, you'll be taking a 300 hostility penalty on the left or a minus 12 to every gatherer and woodcutter resolve on the right. The good thing about this is you can unassign your gatherers and woodcutters. You can focus on building. You can reassign your workers to kind of compensate for this and minimize the effect. And also, if you're gaining resolve through like foxes, for instance, or harpies, but not sure humans and beavers, well, you can keep your humans and beavers doing woodcutting and gathering and let your and let them take the penalty while your other species still gains reputation so this is manageable it's actually not so bad this earns you half a victory point and 15 amber for the right solve and it takes only 10 planks five bricks five fabric this is actually really inexpensive it's actually rather inexpensive compared to all the other dangerous glade events you'll almost always have a solve for this and getting 15 amber for for this for this cost is actually pretty good and half a victory point to go with it. Like this is this is actually quite nice. And on the left, you only need 10. Like, this is another standard fare. We see this one all the time, which is resin, oil, and then these three luxuries and 300 hostility to go with it. I really actually like open vault because this takes only 10 of any particular resource. Like you will always be able to solve this really. You should be able to buy this from a vendor if nothing else, or come up with the building materials. This has a wide, variety of ways you can solve it and i think this right solve in particular is worth a lot of amber and just a lot like imagine you know imagine spending five fabric or five bricks you've got good fabric brick production and you get this out of it or three gold resolve stacks i think open vault is pretty good all right here we have the merchant shipwreck the threat here is that it's going to permanently destroy one of your cornerstones which is it's hard to say exactly how threatening that is like it's not gonna ruin you but okay if you lose your if you lose your rebellious spirit or something, that could be terrible. That could be really terrible. But yeah, I mean, this is reasonably threatening. I would say it's reasonably threatening. It's certainly not nice, certainly not comfortable. And this takes 30 planks, 30 bricks, 30 fabric for the left solve. This is the only time where you see this combo of resources where it's equivalent amounts of bricks and fabric. So planks is actually the best thing you can spend here. And you want, if you have the lumber mill, but if you have something like the brickyard, you can spend your bricks. Like either way, if you have good building map production, this is possible. If you have one good building map production of any type. In this case, it's just coats. Like you have to have coats and you get half an impatience point for this. But in this case, you kind of uniquely need coats for the merchant shipwreck left solve, which maybe you will do, but this is very pricey. You typically don't want to do this. Like half an impatience point doesn't matter, but spending all these building materials and all these coats to get kind of mediocre rewards is not the greatest thing ever. I guess it's, it's okay. On the right hand side, we've got tools, pipes, and parts, same as stone tooth termite burrow. And you likely will not have the pipes for this. Like, I guess you could, if you picked up some building that does pipes like the Smithy now, but I, I think likely you're going to spend tools or maybe parts. I, I find myself spending parts on the merchant shipwreck a lot and just going for the right hand solve here. Um, and you can't do that very often. Like you don't want to spend your parts on glade solves usually. Like typically I would rather spend my 12 tools here. And it's only 12 tools, not 15 for the merchant shipwreck. Uh, so the tools might not be a bad deal. And for this, for your efforts, you get 30 amber and a victory point, which is a lot of amber and a full victory point is nice and a loyalty solve. And this gives you plus 330 hostility and you can mitigate it by 40 for each active trade route. So 300 hostility is something like the rain spirit totem gives you, which is pretty standard. It's like, I mean, it's, it's a lot, it's annoying, but this one at least gives you some chance to mitigate it. Fun fact, I think if you're playing on like low difficulties, like very low difficulties, you can actually get negative hostility out of this thing. Cause I think you get minus 40 from trade routes still, but the 330 is actually only 110 uh, hostility. So this is not so bad. I think, this hostility is not so bad. Overall, the merchant shipwreck, this threat, while it is annoying, I don't think it's going to immediately ruin you. These rewards are pretty good. If you have good building map production, you can get here. Because I, th I think you can do either one of these solves potentially, and, and this reward is kind of nice, I would say this is a bad glade event. 
but it is very threatening, so you want to be careful with the merchant ship wreck. Here is the dreaded fuming machinery. Now, this used to be a solid, ugly glade event, but the devs did nerf this one twice, so it's not as bad as it used to be. And what are the threats here? So, this is going to explode in a five tile radius. And you'll, you'll see in this situation, it's really not a going to affect anything. It'll destroy some trees, it'll destroy some roads, but really it doesn't matter. And this only takes five minutes to solve, which is a little bit faster than most dangerous glade events, which is a positive thing. On the left-hand side, you've got tear down, which takes planks, fabric, bricks, building materials, and you're gonna get a better deal on your bricks and fabric as per usual in this scenario. And this does, this combination shows up quite a bit in dangerous glade events. Not at all in forbidden glade events, by the way. And on the right hand, uh, we also need water, which is pretty accessible. You can put down a rain collector and collect a little bit of water. That's not a big deal at all. And the rewards you get from this are not so good. They're, they're okay. And on the right hand solve, you have fix. This costs, we, we've seen this combination before, tools, pipes, oil, parts, and wildfire essence, which is pretty pricey. Like those are pretty premium items really, especially because it's 60 oil. Like that's a lot of oil. This one, it, it's fairly pricey. It's fairly pricey in terms of how much you have to put in to get this reward out of it. And this reward is pretty unique. What is this? This is an automatic generator of clearance water. And we'll take a look at it in just a second. All right, and we, we flash forwarded a little bit in time here and, and we can see the fuming machinery, it exploded. And it didn't actually destroy these roads, so it destroyed a few trees and that's it. It did very, very little. But now, in the next time it explodes, it's going to destroy it a 10 field radius instead of a five field radius. So that actually does get significantly worse pretty quickly, but even in this case, it, it will destroy those buildings and these resource nodes. Um, so this isn't good. Once it gets to 10 radius, that's not quite as good. You do want to address it before that happens. So fuming machinery, and let's take a look when you fix it. Let's take a look at what you get. All right, here's the makeshift extractor, which you earn from completing the fuming machinery glade event. And you can see what it does is it gives you 50 clearance water tank, tank capacity, and also 10 clearance water every minute, which is two clearance water every 12 seconds. And I phrase it that way because the rain collector is two water every 16 seconds. And this geyser pump is two water every six seconds. It's better than the regular rain collector, but it's worse than a geyser pump. But this is generating water for free and it has tank capacity. But it's not as good as having one worker in a geyser. So ultimately, I think this thing is a, a little bit suspicious. Usually you want to do the left solve on the fuming machinery. They did, they did buff this. It used to be the case that it did not have a tank capacity on it. And when that was the case, it was pretty worthless. Getting clearance water production without the tank capacity to go with it is kind of bad. This thing is not something you're looking for. You probably want to do the left solve on fuming machinery. And by the way, fuming machinery, it is a bad glade event. Here we have the leaking cauldron. And as you all know, this is an ugly glade event. I hate this one. I hate this one so much. Every time I see it, I complain. I complain a lot. The negative effect here is minus eight to global resolve and destroys all planted crops and farm fields. Usually, I mean, this one probably won't matter. I find um, typically when you're opening this one, it, you're opening this one like maybe at the very start of drizzle. So this could matter a little bit. If this happens to you, it could interrupt your drizzle cycle a bit. But typically I'm not so worried about this. I'm mostly I'm worried about the minus eight global resolve stacks, which is kind of a lot. You definitely don't want that. And the left solve here, it takes a combustible. Again, we've seen this a lot. And food production is 90% slower, which means it's gonna take approximately twice as long the way the game does the math. It's gonna take about twice as long to work on your food recipes. And this includes gathering things. Like if you're gathering mushrooms from a camp, that's gonna be twice as long. So this is pretty punishing, like this is, can really slow down your food gain and you can shuffle your workers around to try to evade this but it's very frustrating because food production is a big part of what you do and since it counts gathering as well this will very seriously slow down your workers and the rewards you get from this are kind of mediocre i don't think you're getting a whole lot of rewards for what you put into it on the right hand side this is an empathy solve which is the only good thing i can say about this glade event it takes tools pipes oil parts wildfire essence which is a somewhat unusual combination like i think you'll find the destroyed rainpunk foundry and i think the fishman lighthouse there's one other forbidden glade event that does this as well has this combination and this is pretty pricey like you don't really want to spend three wildfire essence usually because this is enough for a hearth this is a lot of parts 60 oil that's a lot of oil 
30 pipes that's a ton of pipes 12 tools is maybe the best deal here or i don't know it's all pretty bad it's all pretty bad and on top of that you have to spend 30 containers this is a lot of stuff so you better be getting a good reward from this oh it's only 10 to 14 fertile soil fields oh what a bummer that's not good is it that's terrible yeah so you spend all of these goods and you don't even get anything out of it. You get fertile soil, which means like if you get this thing on like year two or I mean year three, you get the fertile soil out of it. Year four, you might be able to start farming, but it's kind of late by that point. You probably found some other fertile soil. There's very, I've never once done the right solve, I believe. And I, I don't see that changing. There's very few situations where I would want this. And keep in mind, if you're playing on a no fertile soil game, you won't be offered farming buildings. So, like, this is just kind of baiting you. <laughs> like, you're, you're going to generate fertile soil that you're never going to be able to use? I'm pretty sure that's true. I've never been offered a farming building on a no f or no fertile soil run. So, you, you're you almost never going to do this right solve. This is just not worth it. It's terrible. The devs need to change this. I hate finding the leaking cauldron. Not to be confused with a blight rock cauldron, by the way. So, this blight event is ugly. It's one of the worst ones out there. Do not open this if you see it with Ancient Pact or Mispiercers. You will regret it. Here is the Stone Tooth Termite Burrow. How are we going to rate this one? And by the way, you actually have way more time to solve this, of course. Like, I just delayed on starting this. And I'm going to lose all my bricks, fabric, and planks in this training expedition run. Um, so is this threatening? Yeah, it's kind of threatening. You could unload all this stuff on a merchant, but typically you really need bricks, fabric, and planks to get your momentum, to put buildings down. You don't want to be losing this. It's pretty threatening. On the left hand side we have burn down which takes a combustible and harvesting and planting are 50 percent slower so that affects your farms but if you're not using farms then this isn't going to hurt you and frequently i don't use farms so you know that might not be bad depending on your current situation and you get some things i think you usually get meat out of this or something like that i think it's pretty common that you're going to get food so th these rewards are okay these rewards are okay and on the right hand side you have tools pipes or parts which is the same as the merchant shipwreck by the way and you can tame this thing it counts as an empathy solve which is nice and while it's active you have to endure a minus five global resolve and you get the termite nest out of it which gives you insects per minute okay and here we have the termite nest which we've converted the stone tooth termite burrow into this harmony decoration and insect per minute machine and it gives five insects per minute which is pretty good when you complete those timed orders um, that are, are based on like resolve to give you whatever per minute usually it's five per minute and those are very strong so five insects per minute is quite good i think usually if you find this on year two if it's like the first glade you open you can convert this into the termite nest and get the insects per minute usually i just do the left solve on stone tooth termite burrow and use the combustible i don't want to spend my tools getting this especially later in the game like your food supply should be good after year four, like you probably don't need this. So termite nest, I consider this a bad glade event. I think it's okay, but usually the food per minute is not what I'm looking for and having to spend tools to get there is kind of pricey. All right, here it is, the blood flower. As you all know, this thing has a tendency to spread uncontrollably, which means it's gonna duplicate itself and you get a minus three to global resolve, which is pretty bad. I mean, you don't want that to happen. You really definitely don't want that to happen. And this thing, it destroys two food items every six seconds. So approximately one food item every 30 seconds or 20 food per minute. So if you have two people working on this, yeah. this is going to destroy about 100 food, which is a lot. And it might even destroy more than that. So make sure your workers are right here. Don't waste any time having your workers run to this glade event. Make sure they're ready to start on it. And if you open this on year two, it's your first Glade event. This is terrible. This is like one of the worst things you can find. And frequently the rewards are just not worth it. For the amount of food it destroys, it, it's really, really terrible. Um, the only good thing I can say about this Glade event is that it's slightly faster than most. And hopefully you have foxes to knock this out quickly. So Bloodflower, not too much to say about this one. This is a huge lemon and of course it's ugly. Here we have the Ancient Shrine. And this is kind of a weird Glade event because you'll notice the threat is in 7 minutes 43 seconds and you only need 3 minutes to complete this as opposed to the normal like 727 that you see base. And with foxes, this is actually not very much time at all. Let's see, how much is it with foxes? The 
Two minutes and five seconds. So it's actually very fast. The left solve here, it takes food and you get 300 hostility and you get some goodies out of it, but this isn't great. I mean, food is pretty valuable, especially early on. So usually you're not going to do this solve, I would say. Even though the plus 300 hostility doesn't matter too much because it's only for a short amount of time, you're probably not going to do this unless you have a good food supply, which you could have. On the right hand side, you have 15 building mats, 15 tools. And you'll see this tools building mat combination show up a couple times, not a whole lot. I believe there's two dangerous glades, one forbidden glade where this shows up. So having tools is kind of the preferred method for a lot of glade solves because they show up in other combos as well. Building mats are a good alternative here because building mats are, tend to be cheaper or more accessible. If you have good fabric or brick production, then yeah, you probably want to use the building mats. But I fell into a trap once where I tried to make the building mats for the solve and I ended up being too late and I lost five villagers and I lost that game. Some of you saw that one on stream. It was a bit humbling and that was kind of the start of it. That was like the first error. And then I made some other subsequent mistakes after that. Uh, which only got worse. So this Glade event, it is somewhat threatening. Like losing five people is actually kind of bad in a lot of cases. You really don't want that. And if you don't have good building mat production, this could be pricey because you need some kind of specific things for the solve. So overall, this is a bad Glade event. It's borderline ugly. I don't know if I'm going to call it ugly exactly. I guess it's okay to get your 15 amber and half a victory point for 15 building mats or 15 tools. It's okay, but it's uh, it's borderline ugly. It's pretty bad. And here it is, the dreaded Fishman Cave. This thing you may have noticed has like the same art model as the Ogre Mounds in World of Warcraft or Warcraft 2 for that matter. I mean, look at this thing, it's an Ogre Mound. Except they put it like a little skull in front of it and called it a Fishman Cave. Anyways, anyways, not digging on the devs, I appreciate their art style. The bad thing here, and this correlates to what it does when you work on the right-hand solve, is it spawns three Fishman Totems, which are 60 hostility each, a total of 180 hostility, but you also have to spend six minutes of worker time clearing them. So it's pretty threatening to get 180 hostility and you have to waste worker time getting rid of them. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate, fairly threatening. On the left-hand side, you have to spend 15 amber and some food. And I don't talk about food too much in Glade Solves. Food does show up in Forbidden Solves, but usually it's not too necessary to pay it. I think having good food supply on hand, of course, is always a good thing. But the food that shows up in Glades is kind of different. It, it's really not that consistent. And Forbidden Glade events, it's a bit more important because there's more Forbidden Glade events that are going to drain your food supply in general. So you, you want a, a sturdy food supply before opening Forbidden Glade events. For Dangerous Glade events, I don't typically worry about it. And I think these are uncommon enough. Like, I guess Jerky is probably the easiest thing to pay here, especially early on. Or if you have Ale Delivery Line, this is one of the few times it's useful. But 15 Amber by itself is kind of pricey. And the rewards on the left-hand side here are not all that great. So usually you're not going to do this left solve, which is corruption. Usually you're going to do the right solve, which is loyalty. And this takes, we've seen this before, 30 stone, 40, or 45 stone, 30 training gear, and 15 or 15 tools. This is the same as the uh, escaped convicts. And you get, in this case, 20 amber and a full victory point, which is pretty nice. This is pretty good for a dangerous glade. You get your full victory point and some amber. However, this spawns a totem every 60 seconds, a minus 60 hostility totem, which calls for two minutes of worker time to work on it. And if you put, assign two foxes here, this is going to take five minutes and 29 seconds to complete. So in theory, you should only spawn five totems. But if you spend more than 30 seconds delivering, you're going to spawn six totems. And you're going to spawn six totems if you have just humans or somebody working on this and possibly even seven. So if you spawn six totems, that's going to take like, uh, another 12 minutes of worker time. In addition to the fact that you're spending like maybe 12 minutes of worker time doing this glade solve. So this glade solve takes twice as long to solve than any other dangerous glade event because of all these totems you have to clear. And this is a lot of hostility. This could spill over into the storm. It could get very awkward. You may not have one of these resources. And this left-hand solve, it's not totally feasible a lot of the time like you're probably not going to have these so fishman cave i'm gonna say the rewards for this are kind of nice in terms of what you put into it but i'm going to say this is an ugly glade event this is going to waste your worker time at best if you need a victory point this is a reliable way to get a victory point so if you're at the end of the game and you just need to win you could maybe open up a, a glade with a fishman cave in it 
and get your victory point out of it. But typically, this is like borderline okay because you get your victory point but it's it's ugly it's ugly because it's very threatening and here we have escaped convict the threat here is that it's going to destroy three random caches prioritizing caches and that you've already discovered and one impatience point the left solve we've got empathy minus eight global resolve exactly the same as in the large destroyed caravan and persuade you get five people pretty much always when you do this you're guaranteed to get five people which may or may not be good depending on where you're at in the game but this can be very useful i do a lot of daily expedition runs where you start off with very few people in which case this could be very handy but on the right hand side check this out we've got 30 tools 45 stone or 15 tool or sorry 30 training gear 45 stone or 15 tools which is pretty common you'll see this cluster a lot we'll talk about this one and for your efforts, you get three quarters of a victory point and 20 amber, which is pretty good. And if you stack that up against the large destroyed caravan where you're spending 30 amber and 15 provisions for three quarters of a victory point. In this case, you're spending, I don't know, maybe if, imagine 45 stone for three quarters of a victory point and 20 amber. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Way more worth your time than the other one. So escaped convicts. I think this is better than Large Destroyed Caravan, something you want to find more often, hopefully. And you will see this combination of inputs. You really do want to have one of these on hand if you're going to go around opening glades. But in this case, you don't need it because the left solve is typically completely serviceable. Overall, Escaped Convicts is a bad glade event. Here we have the Large Destroyed Caravan, which is, of course, the older brother of the Small Destroyed Caravan. And when this triggers, trade routes are not available, and one impatience point, which is not terribly threatening. Y yes, this is bad. However, you can manage without trading for a short period of time. So if this does trigger, it's really not the worst thing in the world. I did have a game where this activated and it disabled my trade routes right after I activated a trade route or right after I submitted a trade route. And what happens is that trade route just kind of hangs there. It does not progress. The trade routes will not progress. But as soon as your trading reactivates, that trade route will still be there and it will then continue to progress as normal. So this is really not so bad if this happens to you. It's not terribly threatening. On the left-hand side, we have loot, minus eight to resolve, and you get some good loot out of it. Corruption solve. On the right side, you've got send to the Citadel. 30 amber, 15 provisions for three quarters of a rep point. Well, is that good? Sometimes you'll spend 28 amber buying half a rep point from a vendor. So in this sense, like, yes, it's sort of worth it. But I'm not terribly impressed by this. And you'll see this happen in a few different Glade events where we have amber and provisions and those convert into a victory point. In general, they're not terribly worth it. Early on in the game, I'm not going to do this. And late in the game, I might not be able to. But later on in the game, yes, I will want to do this. Typically on like year six and beyond, I'm absolutely looking for this right hand solve if it's here. Overall, large destroyed caravan. This is kind of a bad glade event. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. This isn't what you're looking for. This is not a very efficient solve on the right. The solve on the left is what you're going to do most of the time and try to get some free goodies out of this. And here it is, the small destroyed caravan, which does the exact same thing as the large destroyed caravan, except only a minus six instead of a minus eight. And it costs 15 amber, 9 provisions for half a victory point, instead of 30 amber, 15 provisions for 3 quarters of a victory point. So this costs about half as much, and it gives you 2 thirds the reward. So this is, this is okay. You'll get slightly less rewards on this side, but it is overall slightly less threatening, but not by much. I think you'd rather find the large destroyed caravan than the small one. Again, typically you're maybe not going to do this amber and provision solve especially not early in the game later on in the game yes but earlier on you're probably going to take this minus six penalty and just stick with it and accept these rewards not too much else to say about this this is a bad glade event all right here we have the hidden trader cemetery the threat here is your goods will be worth 50 percent less to traders but actually i think it's significantly worse than that i'm not sure how that works uh, maybe it's because of how it stacks with prestige difficulty is my suspicion but it's actually kind of worse than 50%. So my suggestion is think of it this way. When this bad effect happens, you won't be able to trade with traders. You can still do trade routes. So if you stack this up against the small destroyed caravan, large destroyed caravan, this is not as threatening because this actually lets your trade routes still continue, whereas those don't. Just keep in mind, you won't be able to trade while it's active. On the left-hand side, we have burn down, and this takes the very standard affair of oil, coal, steam arrow planks, which are combustible. If you have good plank production, planks are not usually what you want to spend here. Like oil, coal, sea marrow are going to be more efficient for you. You start the game off with 28 coal. So keep in mind that 
your 28 coal is good enough for one such glade solve. The penalty here is plus one or plus 60 hostility for every 60 seconds you work on this glade event, which will end up being quite a bit. You're likely to get six, maybe only five if you have foxes stacks of minus hostility. So up to maybe minus 300, minus 360 hostility before this finishes, which is pretty threatening. You definitely don't want that going on during the storm. And Hidden Trader Cemetery, one thing of interest here is you will always get ancient tablets, five of them. You will always get five ancient tablets for completing Hidden Trader Cemetery on the left. These are very good on the Scarlet Orchard, and sometimes you need these for quests. So having ancient tablets is not bad. This is kind of good in, in the sense that it's a very reliable way of getting ancient tablets. And if you see this on the map with your ancient pact or something, you may be interested in coming over here to get this for the ancient tablets. And let's look on the right side. Again, this is our third and final Amber Provision combination, the other two being Small Destroyed Caravan, Large Destroyed Caravan. What's interesting about this one is this takes 20 Amber, or th excuse me, 30 Amber and 15 Provisions for one victory point. But if you look at Large Destroyed Caravan, it's exactly the same thing, except for three quarters of a victory point. So this is significantly better. I would say this is definitely better than buying half a victory point from a vendor. Of the three that do this, this is definitely the best ratio. But likely, you're going to burn it down. I think more times than not, I find myself burning down the Hidden Trader Cemetery. If you're later in the game and you have the Amber and you have the provisions, like if it's year five or later, probably you want to aim for the right-hand side, if you can. If you can afford it, this is the way to go. But there are better Glade events for getting victory points out of Dangerous Glades. So Hidden Trader Cemetery, this is, it's bad, but it's not really bad. It's more mid. Moving on to the Fallen Fox Scouts. So this comes in five different flavors. I believe it's equally likely um, that you'll find this Glade event compared to any other Glade event, but this one comes in five different flavors. Fallen Fox Scouts, Fallen um, Beaver Traders, etc. You'll only get one that corresponds with a species that you currently have. And I think it probably means that at the start of the game, if I only have humans and foxes, I'm only going to find humans and fox fallen, you know, equivalents. If I get beavers later on, I don't think there it's possible for there to be a beaver one if I get beavers after the fact. I'd have to check that, but I think that's true. Because this effect otherwise wouldn't do anything, which is it gives a minus 12 to foxes in this case. So a, a minus 12, like you may end up favoring that species to accommodate that, which means you'll be suffering a minus 5 to 2 species and a minus 7 to the one that's being favored. So it is strictly less bad than large caravan in that way. And it's somewhat comparable to small destroyed caravan. The bad effect, by the way, is it spawns at least two blood flowers, which I believe means between two and three blood flowers. And look at this. Here's the real kicker about fallen fox scouts. You barely have any time to start this. This is very tight. We're already at seven minutes, 45 seconds on this. Uh, there was very, very little time to start it. Yeah, if we use foxes, we can get this down and have some buffer, but you need to work on this right away or it's going to hurt you. And spawning blood flowers is not a good thing. On the right, this takes 15 amber and one of these four goods for half a victory point, which is pretty pathetic. Now, what's missing from here? If you're paying close attention, you'll notice that scrolls are missing. This is like our normal cluster of resources that you may use as alternatives. However, scrolls are missing. So that is kind of a point off of scrolls. Like I think these other resources tend to be a bit more valuable. Like in particular, incense, tea, and oil uh, tend to be more valuable than scrolls and also resin for that matter. You want these more than you want scrolls. So if you're thinking about taking a delivery line at the beginning, think about incense delivery line or tea delivery line. You're probably not going to do scroll delivery line. And this is exhibit A for why you might not do that. Now, Fallen Fox Scouts, is this a bad Glade event? Yeah, it's bad. It's pretty darn bad. I would say it might even be ugly. No, I'm going to call this one an ugly Glade event, actually. This is an ugly Glade event. This is what an ugly Glade event looks like. It will spawn blood flowers on you if you're not careful, which is like an, a huge threat, especially early in the game. And this, while you should be able to do this, you need to be ready for it. And you're likely going to have to do the left solve. You can do the right solve if you have resources ready to go. But even the delivery time that it takes to deliver these resources to this Glade event may be too slow for you to pull this off. And it's only for half a victory point. So this is a huge lemon. This does count as an empathy solve, but that's the only good thing I can say about this Glade event. Usually, you really don't want to see this at all. Let's take a look at the Corrupted Caravan. This is going to be our first, which has this combination in it, which is reeds, coats, copper bar, and crystal dew. You'll need 30 reeds, 30 coats, or 6 of the bars. And it takes 6 purging fire. So the Corrupted Caravan, the Withered Tree, and the Blight Rock Cauldron they all do this they all do this they take this combination and six purging fire 
Now, Corrupted Caravan is the weakest of these three. It's the weakest of these three, and we'll see why when we get to the other ones. But essentially, like, the payout you get isn't as good. You get one victory point, which is okay. Like, spending, you know, six Crystal Dew on the Coral Forest plus six Purging Fire for a victory point is pretty darn worth it. It's actually kind of good. Now, this effect can be threatening. This is every 120 seconds, or two minutes in layman's terms. One, it's actually going to be two on prestige difficulty. Two, Blight Rot Cysts are spawned for every hostility level. So if, if I'm at hostility level three right now, two minutes after I, I click start on this Glade event, two minutes from now, it's going to spawn Blight Rot Cysts. So what you do when you see the Corrupted Caravan is take a look at the time. Take a look at the time, and the time is weird because I'm playing on Training Expedition. If I were playing right now, at 4 minutes and 12 seconds left in the drizzle cycle, it would spawn Blight Rot Cysts, six of them to be specific, because 3 times 2, my current hostility level. What you can do is you can unassign your woodcutters right before this happens, and you should pause the game and kind of pause on pause right when you get close to that 4 minute 12 second mark in this case, and unassign your woodcutters, and maybe sacrifice some goods if you need to, some wood and some coal, to get that hostility level down. And it's worth it. If you lose like 10 wood from sacrificing to get your hostility down to zero, it's worth it because that evades two Blight Rot Cysts. And two Blight Rot Cysts is gonna cost you 20 wood to fight, not to mention the time and the risk. So you definitely want to evade this effect as much as possible. So while this is annoying, it's actually quite avoidable. And if you're a newer player, you might need to practice this a couple times, but once you get the hang of it, it's not so difficult to do. You just have to remember, this will save you, this trick will save you a lot of headache. So this right solve is actually not so bad, and I think it is one of the better ways to get a victory point. In the game and it's worth noting this combination of resources it does show up three times in dangerous glades one time in forbidden glades so you typically do want one of these things and on a biome like the marsh it can be awkward because you're not going to find reeds and you may not have an easy way to get these other resources on a biome like the coral forest obviously you're going to have tons of reeds and coral and crystal dew so you're not going to have any trouble at all solving this now, and this is one of the main reasons why you would have harpies store their coats at the beginning of the game and not use them, because if you encounter something like the Corrupted Caravan, you'll want to use your harpy coats on this and you need 30 of them. The bad thing that happens for Corrupted Caravan is corruption in the ancient hearth grows 50% quicker, which is actually kind of threatening. I haven't experienced this one too many times, but 50% faster corruption, if it's, I guess it depends really, right? If it's year three, if you don't have any blight rot cysts, then this doesn't matter. So if it's year two, then this actually doesn't matter at all. And you can let the bad thing happen and take your one impatience point. It doesn't matter. If it's year three, this could be extremely threatening. So you do want to be careful about this one, depending on the year. The left solve, it takes 30 containers, which is kind of a lot. You don't usually have these in the early game and 15 provisions, which is also fairly expensive in the early game. And you have to incur half an impatience point, but that doesn't matter at all. This doesn't matter. And you get 30 amber, which is actually quite a bit of amber. So if you can do the left solve and you need the amber, this is not so bad. Typically, you want to do the right solve. The right solve gets you your victory point, and this is typically cheaper in terms of inputs to solve this, and you should be able to evade this bad effect. So overall, Corrupted Caravan, this is a bad Glade event. It's kind of middle of the road bad. Here is your Blight Rot Cauldron. Using rain in rain engines causes Blight Rot Cyst to generate 50% quicker, which is not bad, right? Because if this bad effect happens, you can just turn off your rain engines. Who cares? You can just not run rain engines. Or you can run them anyways. And, you know, there's a trick for using less rainwater, for getting you're still getting your doubling chance. So you don't have to use very much rainwater. You don't have to generate very many Blight Rot Cysts anyways to get value out of your rain engines. So this is really not bad at all, actually. This is a very mild effect. On the left side, we have, for every 20 food produced, two Blight Rot Cysts are spawned in the settlement. And keep in mind, that's going to be four Blight Rot Cysts on prestige difficulty. Now, is this bad? Yeah, it's kind of bad. It means you have to slow down your food production. It means you kind of have to halt your food production, which depending on where you're at in the game may not be very easy to do. So this solve, but this is free. You don't have to submit any resources for this and you can sometimes shuffle your workers around and you don't have to be gathering food. One thing to keep in mind here is that farming, like if you're farming grain or if you're gathering grain, grain does not count as food. So you can gather grain and herbs for that matter safely as well because they're not directly food, but if you turn them into porridge, then uh, that's bad. But And if you're also gathering meat from trees, the meat that you get from trees on the coral forest will count, and as will meat on any biome, or mushrooms for that matter, or whatever. 
If it comes from trees, it's still food if it's food. So be careful, your woodcutters could be generating this. And when you when you start this, you'll see a little debuff over here for this event. Be sure to check it. Be sure to look at the progress. You don't want any surprises when it comes to the blight. So just be cautious of that. Overall, this left solve, it is feasible because it, it's free. It's free. So this is a feasible solve. And on the right hand side, it, this is an empathy solve. It's cleanse. It costs six purging fire and coats, reeds, copper bar, crystal dew. We've seen this formation before. This shows up in one forbidden glade event and quite a number of dangerous glade events, three of them. So, and this gets you 20 amber and a victory point. And this is one of my favorite glade events. I think the, the withered tree is actually better. But this one is doing a lot for you. It's giving you that amber and victory point for not very many resources. I mean, imagine this. Like, this is still a very, very good exchange. And this is not threatening at all. This is, like, very mild. Light Rock Cauldron, this is a good Glade event. This is an easy way to get amber and victory points and also get your empathy solves. And here is the Withered Tree. The Withered Tree. Some of you know how I feel about this one already. The bad effect on the Withered Tree is it causes Blight Rot Sis to take five seconds longer to burn. And for the record, I think compared to the one which gives you 50% faster corruption rate on the hearth, I think this is significantly less threatening. And again, this is only really a problem on years where you, like year three, six, or nine, if you're fighting Blight Rot, if it's some other year, this is probably not so bad for you. The left effect here costs no resources, but you spawn one Blight Rot Sis for every, or it, and it'll be two Blight Rot Sis on prestige difficulty. Spawn two Blight Rot Sis for every two Dangerous Glades discovered. So if you've only discovered one Dangerous Glade, it actually won't spawn any Blight Rots at all. If you've discovered three Dangerous Glades, it's going to spawn one or two Blight Rot Sis every two minutes. Now, if we assign Foxes to this thing, it takes five minutes, 29 seconds. And this doesn't take any delivery at all. So you're only going to spawn, if you've opened three Dangerous Glades, this is only going to spawn four Blight Rot Sis by the time you complete it, which is not terrible. You know, that's pretty manageable. And you get pretty good rewards for this too. I mean, look at this, it's pretty beefy. So this is a pretty viable Glade solve. This is very, very viable. You're looking at potentially zero Blight Rot Cysts or maybe four. If you have, um, if you don't have Foxes, likely you will get maybe six Blight Rot Cysts out of this. So that is, that's not as good. And obviously if you're later on in the game, if you opened like four Dangerous Glades, this could actually be a problem, but likely you're gonna go for the right hand solve. The right hand solve is six purging fire and again this combination of coats reeds copper bar crystal dew and you get 20 amber and a victory point a full victory point out of this so look at this i mean on the coral forest imagine trading six crystal dew and six purging fire for 20 amber and one victory point that's actually a very good deal as far as glade events go this is this is actually quite good quite lucrative i would say so both of these solves are actually very good and this effect is not very threatening so withered tree this is a glade event you want to see a lot. And this is one of the reasons why I value Copper Bar Crystal Dew, because you can trade it in for a very, very high value trade here. And again, another reason why you want to save your Harpy Coats potentially. And finally, we're doing this glade event last because it was the very last one I found. And I opened so many glades looking for this stupid petrified tree. I hate this glade event because I spent multiple hours just opening glades on training expedition trying to find this thing and it, it, yeah finally we're here finally we're here so the bad effect on petrified tree is it destroys all wood and planks the left solve cut down minus one housings capacity and minus 50 percent to wood cutting speed which is kind of annoying like typically you don't want to do this this is annoying because you want to woodcut during the drizzle and clearance typically and then during the storm reduce your hostility so this may make it awkward it's actually maybe better to do this during the storm the minus one to housing size isn't so bad and funny enough like big shelters are the most resilient to this effect and you get okay rewards for this considering it doesn't cost anything and it's not very threatening you get okay rewards and the right hand solve is kind of strange actually you get incense or tea no scrolls no oil no resin available and herbs and this is the same as infected drainage moles of forbidden glade by the way kind of randomly incense and tea are especially good for this reason like you can actually use them here at the petrified tree and trading your 30 incense 30 tea for 15 amber and half a victory point is pretty good and this counts as an empathy solve so that's actually fairly worth it overall the petrified tree i'm gonna say this is a good glade event but it's borderline bad. This solve is pretty worth it, but you have to have one of these two specific resources, or if you have herbs at the herb garden, like that's also a possibility. And that does it for all of our dangerous glade events, all 23 of them. We'll get into the forbidden ones now. Uh, a quick note, 
of the 23 glade events if you opened all 23 glade events you would find 12 victory points possible sitting on the glade events that you could pick up if you did the correct solve for them so essentially when you open a dangerous glade event on average it's going to have half a victory point on it now forbidden glade events on the contrary there's 14 of them and 12 of them have a full victory point so when you open a dangerous glade you're getting approximately half a victory point when you open a forbidden glade you're getting approximately a full victory point now that's not counting caches because uh forbidden glades actually do have more caches as well but typically from the glade event itself you are going to get almost double the amount of victory points from forbidden glade events all right here we have the infected drainage mole not to be confused with the regular drainage mole the consequence here is earthquake kills villagers and destroys all resource nodes buildings and events within a 20 field radius this is very familiar this is fairly threatening likely you will need to do something about this because a 20 field radius is rather far now if you can let this go okay fine but usually you will need to worry about this opening more glades at the minimum left hand solve perform ritual this takes 60 meat 60 insects or 75 jerky and also 45 of incense scrolls or wine and then 30 of clearance or stormwater. This is quite a bit. Like, this takes all of these resources. So you need to have a lot of food, and you need to have one of these luxuries. Like, incense is most likely the one you're going to carry. And this is one of the other reasons why incense is so good. Tea doesn't apply here. Scrolls, yes. And you get some random rewards for this. This is not terribly worth it. If you have to do it, and you can afford the food and the rainwater, then yes. Now, heal on the right-hand side. And this counts as empathy. And this takes 45 tea, 45 incense, or 60 herbs, which is not so bad. If you have the herb garden, you can get 60 herbs fairly easily. It is still going to be more efficient overall to use incense or tea. Probably, I mean, incense is going to be your best bet here. You'll note that scroll, oil, resin do not show up in this cluster, but tea and incense do. And for your efforts, you get 30 amber and one victory point, which is very nice. That is very nice. Now, what are the negative effects here? There's two of them. Upon awakening the infected mole, all the dormant cysts activate and start to corrupt the ancient hearth. So this causes all blight rot cysts to activate immediately, even though it's not the storm. And then infestation, blight rot cysts become extremely aggressive. Eight, which is 16, blight rot cysts will spawn in the settlement. Each cyst increases hostility by plus 30 points, which is uh, quite a lot, right? We're talking about, I think, 480 hostility points here. 16 times 30. That sounds right, 480. And then plus whatever additional blight rot cysts you happen to have in your settlement anyways. And if you open this on like year six, that could get really ugly really fast. Now you're gonna have to clear. So that could be up to like 26 blight rot or so, which is quite a lot of blight rot to have to deal with. You really don't wanna be clearing that many. And the fact that they give you additional hostility as well can be an issue although hopefully you're ready to clear them, you may need to make a second or even a third blight post to deal with all of this blight. This is rather intense. Still, I prefer the right-hand solve here because it has the victory point and because it has the amber, and these costs are not so bad. I mean, 45, 45, 60, you can pay this. This is really the, the hardest part right here, is the fact that it's going to spawn 16 blight rot cysts, which if you're paying wood to make purging fire, that's 160 wood. In, the, in terms of purging fire to, to destroy all those. So Infected Drainage Mole, I used to like this thing because I found it a lot. Like I was just seeing this Glade event all over the place. I'm forced to admit though, Infected Drainage Mole, this is, it's kind of a lemon. Like this solve takes a lot of food and it requires like specific luxuries and also rainwater, which you may not have the right color. So this solve is not totally reasonable. This solve is also very costly in terms of Blight Rot cysts that it's going to spawn. This is kind of a bad glade event. In fact, it's more than bad. It's ugly. Here we have the drainage mole. The threat on this is it's going to destroy everything in a 20 field radius, which is, you know, fairly threatening, fairly threatening. This is going to open forbidden glades potentially or open some amount of glades and increase your hostility. And it's going to destroy all of these resources here as well. So that can be rather threatening. You likely need to do something about it. However, if this is far enough away from your base, you may be okay just to let it go. You may be okay just to let it go. All right, and our two options here are feed, and that's gonna take 60 insects, eggs, or roots. And all woodcutters and gatherers get a minus 22 penalty to resolve, which is pretty severe. You, But this isn't terrible. You can always just unassign your woodcutters and unassign your gatherers, even during the storm. And maybe during the storm, it actually kind of makes sense to do that. The alternative is to chase it away, and you have to pay training gear, tools, or stone, same as the fishman cave. And this gives you plus 300 hostility, which is actually 
not bad. Do I think this is good, bad, or ugly? I think this is, I think this is a good Glade event. I think you can convert 15 tools into an am or 20 amber and a victory point very easily. Plus 300 hostility is not terrible. That's like, you know, there's some dangerous glade events that do this. This is just about as threatening as a glade, dangerous glade event. So for a forbidden, it's really not that bad. Here we have the hungry, hungry mistworm. Mistworm infestation, where there's one mistworm, soon many more will follow. Destroys all stored food, both raw and cooked. Losing your entire food supply, pretty bad. Most likely you're not gonna allow this threat to happen. Of course, you can hide food in certain buildings. You can plan accordingly and kind of evade this to a certain effect if you're into micro. Our left solve is feed, which is an empathy, and it takes pretty much meat. It takes 30 meat, 30 insects, 30 skewers, or 45 jerky which is okay, like you're reasonably likely to have one of these, and 30 is not so much, it only takes 30. And this negative effect, all it does is hides dangerous and forbidden glade warning. So you won't be able to see what glades are dangerous and which ones are forbidden, but probably who cares? Like this really doesn't matter. And if you really care, look before you start the glade event and make a little map on your cocktail napkin. There's really no reason for this to matter at all. And you get okay rewards for this. Like considering this costs very little to solve, you get okay rewards. Now the right hand solve, is again a fairly standard fare of training gear, tools, and stone. And you also have to suffer losing six items every 10 seconds, which is worse than blood flower. The fishman outpost is the same thing. It's six food every 10 seconds. It is moderately threatening. And in fact, fishman outpost takes this exact same solve as well. This is okay. This is what I like to go for if possible. I'll take my amber and I'll take my victory point. That's my preferred way to solve this. If you can spare the food. If you can't, then okay, maybe you're gonna have to submit 30 raw food. Overall, Hungry Mistworm, this is a good Glade event. Here we have the Fishman Outpost, a threat of poisoned food, 25% chance of death after eating, which I assume means that after they go on break, not every time they consume a food, because if you have extra food consumption or you're on prestige difficulty, you know that they will eat more items every time they go back on break. I assume this is only a 25% chance. For the left solve, this is corruption, you get, you submit 30 amber and you submit pack of luxuries, pack of trade goods, or a lot of pack of crops, and you get a few rewards. Or on the right side, this is loyalty. You hunt that, hunt down the fishmen. You spend training gear, tools, or stone, which is, you know, same thing as the fishman cave. We see this combination a lot. But also while you're doing this, it's food is destroyed at a rate of six items every 10 seconds, which is quite a bit. That's actually worse than a blood flower. This is fairly threatening. You need to make sure you've got a stable food supply before you attempt this. The reward of one victory point in 20 amber is nice. You definitely want to get that victory point. That's typically what I'm looking for. This isn't terrible because it does have your victory point on it and it's got some reasonable solves here, but the left solve is kind of expensive in terms of amber and all of these packs that it wants. Having villagers have a chance to die every time they go on break is pretty threatening. You really can't let this happen for any length of time. So you have to address this right away. Overall, this is a bad Glade event. You probably want to avoid this one whenever possible. Here we have the giant stormbird's nest. Now, it's interesting to note, you will only find this Glade event when you have harpies. And part of the reason for that is because when you do the right solve, you get the tamed stormbird. It provides eggs and it gives harpies a global resolve boost when you have it. And you will not see this glade event unless you have harpies. So if you don't solve the glade event, you get a permanent minus four penalty to resolve during the, the storm. Multiplies with hostility level. Permanent. Needless to say, this is absolutely threatening. On the left hand side, we have feed, which is an empathy solve. And it takes 60 grains, 60 roots, 60 mushrooms, and also 90 meat or 90 insects. Wow, so this takes 150 food items total. Every time I've opened this glade, I've never really been able to consider the left side at all as an option because I've just never had that much food to spare. This And you need very specific types of food as well, not just anything will do. So this is rather difficult to solve. Now on the right hand side, we have tame, and this doesn't take anything to solve. This causes a storm to appear immediately. While that storm is active, you have essentially the same effect on it, which is minus four penalty to resolve for every hostility level, which is rather severe. Like if I start this right now with this crew at hostility four, that's gonna be an additional minus 16 on top of whatever the storm was already giving me. 
36 ish so like i think if i started this right now everyone would get a minus 36 because of the storm and because of this additional effect this can be very threatening it hasn't caused me an issue in any of my games but i rarely ever see this one it's uncommon to see the stormbird's nest because you only get it when you have harpies so it is a bit more uncommon than other glade events overall how good or bad is the giant stormbird's nest it is bad here we have the ancient burial site. The threat here is spawn six, count them, six blood flowers. That is a lot of blood flowers if you're keeping score at home. The left hand solve is calm spirits. You have to submit 60 complex food. Any complex food except for porridge will do. This is kind of a lot for complex food because typically if people are eating this right, it's going to be somewhat difficult to come up with 60 of anything. And you also have to come up with 60 incense tea or scroll resin or oil won't work for this this is overall rather costly you may not have the materials to do this however the right hand solve takes 15 tools or 15 pack of building materials this is pretty good if you're opening forbidden glades typically you will have the tools for the solve and if not hopefully you have at least one good fabric production or brick production or plank production and you can crank out pack of building materials 15 pack of building materials is not terrible and this gives you one victory point. No amber, but a victory point is good. The negative effect here is you have to stop tree cutting essentially because every two fallen trees will increase your hostility by 15. And of course you do want to get on this right away. Overall, how do I rate this? This is a little bit difficult for me to rate. I do kind of like this glade event, but I'm realizing now that it doesn't actually give you amber, whereas the majority of forbidden glade events will give you amber in addition to the victory point. The left solve is pretty terrible though. So overall, I'm going to call Ancient Burial Site a bad glade event. Here is the destroyed rainpunk foundry. The threat on this is it's going to explode and destroy everything in an 18 field radius. How bad is this? Well, 18 tiles is kind of far. Like this is going to open other glades most likely. So you have to ask yourself if you can if you can handle that. You do strongly want to consider letting this happen potentially because that will get rid of the destroyed rainpunk foundry. Your other alternatives are salvage it and rebuild it. Now both of these effects, Salvage and Rebuild, have the same working effect on it, which is it's going to spawn a blood flower every 90 seconds. Let's look how, how long it takes with three people in it. With three people, this is down to six minutes and 57 seconds. When you're getting a blood flower every 90 seconds, you would expect it to be approximately four in six minutes, and that's how many you should be getting is four. Now, if you have foxes, you may be able to do this a little bit more efficiently. With foxes, this is down to five minutes, 19 you should be able to finish this with three blood flowers spawning if you have foxes. Any glade event work speed you can get for destroyed rainpunk foundry is going to help a lot because blood flowers are very negative and you have to spend your time solving the blood flowers as well. Now which solve should you do since these are both kind of similar and they both cause blood flowers to spawn? Well in my strong opinion do the left solve. The left solve will give you some random rewards. Frequently it gives you or at least it used to always give you the ability to create parts at the at the crude workstation, kind of like how this gives you the ability to create parts. It doesn't look like that's always the case. But regardless, I don't really rate the Rainpunk Foundry very highly. This allows you to create parts, it allows you to create wildfire essence. Yeah, you can see these recipes. And I, I suppose this could be okay, but usually when you're this far in the game that you're opening Forbidden Glades, usually you're fine on parts and maybe the wildfire essence just doesn't matter that much. So I'm not so convinced that this is a great building to have and I don't think it's worth investing all of these goods in order to get it. There's not really any cheap way to get this. So I don't think it's worth the investment. I think this is really, really a weak solve. You almost always want to go with the left. They, in, in my opinion, they really should change this so that this does not spawn blood flowers on the right side or they should make it a little bit different because the fact you always get blood flowers makes the destroyed rainpunk foundry very threatening. It can ruin your food supply. I hate to see this glade event, or I really do. And if you don't have foxes or any glade event work speed, this is going to get really awkward really fast. Which is why, back to my initial point, I think you may want to consider letting this explode sometimes, if you can allow it to do so. And when it explodes, it will get rid of all these resource nodes. Fun fact, the destroyed rainfall foundry used to be deletable, and I reported that as a bug to the devs and they actually fixed it. Which, I regret every single day having reported that issue because, man... This Glade event is a lemon on the good, bad, ugly scale. This is ugly. All right, here we have the Lightning Catcher. The consequence is destroy four random buildings in the settlement. This is not so bad. It's actually fairly inexpensive to rebuild your buildings most of the time. It's possible for this to destroy a hearth, a small hearth. And if it does, it only takes one plank to rebuild it. So that's really not so terrible. 
some buildings will be more expensive than that. If you have service buildings, if you have a lot of service buildings, then this is maybe a little bit more threatening. So you may want to consider deleting your service buildings before this triggers, just so that you don't have to suffer them being destroyed in particular. The left solve, burn it down, increases hostility by 600 points. Wow, that's a minus 12 resolve. Probably, if you're opening Forbidden Glades, you're probably okay to deal with this. You're definitely not going to be gaining reputation. Foxes are immune to this, of course, so foxes are not bothered at all by this. This only takes 30 oil, 30 coal, 30 sea marrow, or 45 flanks. That's not really bad. You probably should have one of these on hand, and this gives you random goods. On the right-hand side, you can fix it. There's no negative effect to working on it. You get 20 amber and a victory point, but this costs quite a bit of materials. You're going to spend 4 wildfire essence, 24 tools, 36 pipes, 90 oil, or 15 parts on the left, and on the right, 60 containers. So you can see this is extremely expensive. The best thing you could do for this is, I mean, if you have the wildfire essence, I guess you could use that. That's not so bad. Otherwise, if you have the smelter or the tool shop, I, I guess you could do pipes or 90 oil, but this is fairly expensive no matter how you slice it and especially 60 containers. So while this is desirable, you do want your victory point and your amber. This is kind of expensive and I don't like to see the lightning catcher. I think this is not exactly a good trade. If I want my victory point in amber, there's a lot of other glade events that are going to get you there more efficiently. I tend to prefer the left solve because this takes fairly small amount of inputs relatively small amount of inputs like 30 oil is really not that bad and the plus 600 hostility while this is unfortunate likely you can survive it and if and again foxes are immune to this overall the lightning catcher this is it's a bad glade event it's not what you're looking for but it's not ugly all right here we have the fishman lighthouse the threat on this thing is a strange and evil light glade event work speed is 20 percent slower permanently even after this is solved and gain one impatience point this is pretty threatening in my mind, very threatening, and this slows down everything, including caches. So at any point in the game, this is not something you really want to suffer. Now, one of my issues with Fishman Lighthouse is the left solve and the right solve, they both give you a very similar effect, which is plus hostility based on the number of hearths you have. So regardless of how you solve this, you are going to incur a plus to hostility which means you can't really easily solve this during the storm, potentially, and it may prevent you from getting reputation during the drizzle clearance cycle as well. The good thing about this is it's relatively cheap in terms of materials. You can spend 30 oil, 30 coal, 30 sea marrow, or 45 flanks is probably the worst one, but any of these to do the left solve, and this gives you 150 hostility per hearth, which is going to end up being 150 if you only have one, or up to maybe 450, which is like quite a bit. And on the right hand side, we have cleanse. This takes a very standard affair of incense, tea, oil, resin scrolls, which is a good thing. You almost should have one of these, and 30 oil is extremely cheap, actually. This is very cheap to do. And this gives you plus 300 uh, hostility for every hearth in your settlement, which could go up to 900 if you have three hearths. And I think, I mean, there's ways to mitigate this if you delete your hearth. And for this, for your efforts, you get a uh, permanent source of sea marrow, and you get one impatience point with the queen. How do I rate this overall? Let me just say that first. How do I rate this? I rate Fishman Lighthouse as a bad Glade event. This is not something you usually want to see, and I know that disappoints some people because some people really like this Fishman Lighthouse because of the permanent sea marrow source, and that is reasonable because spending 30 oil to get a permanent source of sea marrow is a reasonable investment. And here we have the destroyed Cage of the War Beast. You don't have too long to respond to this one, there's only about a 3 minute before the threat timer overtakes the actual timer. So you have to be very quick with the destroyed cage of the warbeast. Consequence, a free roaming warbeast will make the forest even more dangerous. Hostility is increased by 240. Also, there will be two fewer newcomers on every caravan. This is probably fine. I think if you're opening Forbidden Glades, usually this is late enough in the game where it doesn't matter so much. Plus 240 hostility, yes, this will matter quite a bit. And I think this does go away after you clear the destroyed cage of the warbeast. So what are the options here? You have Cultivate the Decay, spawns between four and six blood flowers, and gives you two impatience points. Ouch. Definitely not something you'd want to do, because this is going to take a lot of time to solve this. It's going to give you impatience, and it's going to give you blood flowers, which you have to spend time solving as well. And the rewards for this are pretty weak. So you really want to avoid the left solve if at all possible. The right solve, you have to spend 24 amber and then 30 of, or sorry, 36 incense, tea, oil, or resin. You'll notice that scrolls is missing from this list. Incense and tea again showing up, oil still very useful, and you get one victory point for this. Paying 24 amber and then you really should have one of these. If you don't have one of these, then you really shouldn't be opening Forbidden Glades in the first place. You may not have 24 amber. That is the more difficult ask sometimes. 
And this is one of the reasons why you really want to have Amber when opening Glade events. Destroyed Cage of the Warbeast. How bad is this? It's ugly. Destroyed Cage of the Warbeast is pretty ugly. All right. Here we have Five Nights at Freddy. I mean, Fishman Soothsayer. The threat on this is you begin to feel the growing anxiety. Forest Mysteries require lower hostility level of minus two to activate during the storm. What does that mean? That means that something like uh, Swarms which is active from hostility two, is actually going to be active from hostility zero, and something like insatiable hunger will be active from hostility two inst instead of hostility four. How bad is this? It really depends on your current forest mysteries. Like if you've got all level one forest mysteries, then it really doesn't matter at all. If you have some high level forest mysteries or things like greater threat, or the one that spawns blight rot, um, or rotten rain, yeah, this could be bad. Like this could be very bad. So use your judgment, use your judgment. It's hard to know exactly how bad this is. It really depends on your game. Now, left-hand side here. This is a very standard solve, incense, tea, oil, resin, scrolls. We see this all over the place. So this is really simple. Uh, frankly, you, you gotta have at least one of these before you go, go around busting down forbidden glades. So this gives you a plus 150 hostility for every scout in your settlement. And a scout is somebody who's assigned to this glade event. So now it's going to say expected hostility 150, whereas now it says zero. If you have two people working this, that's 300 hostility. If this goes over into the storm, you could actually just have one person work on it. Like, you know, 150 hostility is not so bad. You could probably survive this during the storm. You have plenty of time to do this, and you may even be able to do it during the storm. And for, the, for a reward, you always get this cornerstone airbender. All negative, it's essentially the opposite of this. So all force mysteries take one more hostility to be active. So fog would only be active at hostility two and above. How important is this? Again, it depends on your game. If you have a bunch of very mild level one force mysteries, then yeah, probably doesn't matter at all. It's probably whatever. The right solve is loyalty. This takes, again, a very standard fare of training gear, tools, stone. And the effect here is every time you consume 10 complex food, clothing, or a service, so essentially, anytime you fulfill a need 10 times, random villagers are killed, which I think means one random villager per 10 times. Regardless, don't let this happen. If you do, go for the right-hand solve. What you want to do is go in the consumption panel and disable everything. The reward for this is 30 amber and one victory point. This is actually pretty good. Like, if you disable luxury consumption, you may not be gaining reputation. You may not be gaining reputation, but this is actually preferable to something like plus 300 hostility because at least this way you're not consuming your good food. Overall, is this a good Glade event or a bad Glade event? It's good, surprisingly. Fishman Soothsayer is good. Here we have the Dark Gate. The threat here is rather simple. It's gonna kill 12 people. Your left solve is Perform Ritual. This kills somebody every time you start this and you can spend 60 oil or 30 of incense scroll tea. It kills someone and you get some random goodies. On the right hand side, you have to have three wildfire essence, which is exactly enough for a hearth. And from a quest, you probably won't get three wildfire essence complete, uh, you know, three total from a quest. This also causes, while you're working on it, a minus 10 global resolve um, and a plus 300 hostility, which is minus 16 global resolve total, which is kind of a lot. You almost certainly will not be gaining reputation from resolve while this is active. This doesn't reward you any amber, it only gives you one victory point. This does count as a loyalty solve for whatever it's worth. Is this a good glade event? The good news is that incense, scroll, tea, oil are relatively common, and I typically advise having incense or tea with you. Scrolls also can be used in this case, and oil is a little bit less efficient, but you know, 60 oil is still not terrible to, have, to submit. This takes three wildfire essence, which is kind of a lot. I find myself usually doing the left solve on this, even though I don't want to. Overall, I think this is a bad glade event, it's kind of borderline ugly. Wildfire. Threats. The mere presence of a fire spirit can cause spontaneous combustion in its vicinity, destroys all stored fuel. Coal, oil, wood, sea marrow. So anything you can burn at the hearth. Your left solve for this is catch, and it's going to take 12 tools, 10 parts, 30 pipes, and then water of your choice, 90 of it, and one single container, which is, I mean, basically nothing, right? You should be able to cough up one container the vast majority of the time. So this is really tools and pipes and parts and some water. And for this, there's no negative effect. This is kind of okay. If you have the ability to gather 90 water of some type, this is not such a bad solve. It will take 12 tools or nine parts, which is kind of expensive. You don't really want to spend it that way, but this is an option. But typically you want to do the right solve here. Two wildfire essence, and you can get two wildfire essence from a quest a lot of the time. Now, if you don't have any extra wildfire essence, 
you may have to spend two of your initial six wildfire, and that's going to prevent you from building a hearth. You may need to think about that before you do the right solve. And this causes uh, fuel to disappear from your warehouse, five items every 15 seconds. But you have to, I mean, you're, you're going to get this. It's all going to be destroyed if you don't do anything about this at all. So you can see there's a common theme here. It's destroying your fuel. And this gives you 20 amber and one victory point for the right solve on the wildfire, which is pretty nice. I like getting the amber and I like getting the reputation point. This is, you know, a, a bit more threatening than dangerous glade events, of course. Overall, I think this one is fine. I think this glade event is typically something you're looking for, and I rate this one as good. I think this is a good glade event. Here we have the noxious machinery. The threat on this thing is it's going to explode. I'm seeing a common pattern here in a 10 field radius as opposed to like 20 or so. And this also causes 10 blight rot cysts to spawn. If you're on playing on P20, this is a training expedition and I did not toggle on the double blight rot. But if you're on P20, this is gonna cause 10 blight rot cysts to spawn. And our solve options are on the left side, overflow. This causes a loss of four units of rainwater every 12 seconds and every two minutes four blight rot cysts are spawned in the settlement it's four on higher prestige difficulties every two minutes we get four blight rot cysts if you're doing this with like a kind of a regular way you're going to get three rounds of this so you're going to get 12 blight rot cysts which is you know 12 blight rot cysts is kind of the same thing as doing this on the right because you're going to have to cough up the 12 purging fire anyways um in this case you have to spend the time fighting the blight but that's not so bad i mean it's kind of the same deal here except if you can solve this with foxes you should only have two bonds so you should only have eight blight rot cysts if you use foxes which is a bit better you know that's one third uh less blight rot cysts spawning if you have foxes here and you have your foxes right next to the glade event ready to go the right solve and this is exactly the same as the blight rot cauldron which is a dangerous glade solve it's exactly the same thing as the withered tree but slightly more quantity so this takes 12 purging fire and then you have coats copper bar crystal dew and reeds typically you will have one of these i talk about this combination a lot you want one of these four things and likely at this point in the game you really should have the ability to make crystal dew or copper bar or it coats at minimum i really like this glade solve i think that 30 amber and one victory point for 12 purging fire and whatever your choice on this this is relatively efficient and there's no negative effect to working on this and the left side this is okay i mean 12 blight rot cysts is kind of similar to doing the right solve if you have to do this like if you really don't have any way to get the secondary resource you can do this overflow Ultimately, how do I rate Noxious Machinery on the good-bad-ugly scale? Good. This is good. All right, now that we've gone through the long and arduous task of rating every Glade event in the game and talking about optimal strategy, let's get back into our resource tier list. We want to discuss some of the individual resources and whether you need them or not for Glade events, right? Let's get back over to the spreadsheet. In this column, we have every resource that I want to talk about. Actually, that's not entirely true. I think I'm going to gloss over some things. This is going to be a little bit less formal than my other tier list videos. So scrolls, scrolls show up in Dangerous Glade events six times. They show up in Forbidden Glade events five times. And what is this modified number? This modified number, I have a comment here to represent that. It's missing from the Infected Drainage Mole's best solve, which is the right solve. So scrolls do show up on the Infected Drainage Mole, but only on the left-hand side. And usually when you're solving the Infected Drainage Mole, you want to solve it with the right-hand side because that's the more lucrative, that's the more efficient solve. Some other random notes here, like it's missing from the Destroyed Cage of the War Beast, which is kind of unique for scrolls, and it's why Incense Tea Oil and Resin are actually maybe better. Maybe not Resin, but Incense Tea Oil are actually definitely better than scrolls. It's missing from Forgotten Temple of the Sun, Petrified Tree, which is incense tea herbs, by the way. And it's missing from Fallen Harpy Scientists, Fallen Beaver Traders, etc. It is another strike against scrolls because resin actually does show up on that one. So scrolls, I think scrolls are an okay resource. They do show up in quite a bit of Glade events, like this number six and three. This is pretty good. And yeah, they're only on the left side solve for Ancient Burial Site. I think the right solve is better for Ancient Burial Site. So I only count them as showing up on three Forbidden Glade events. Still, scrolls are useful. They do show up quite a bit. Scrolls, scrolls are going solidly in the B tier. Put them a little bit lower than maybe they deserve because incense and tea are basically just better. And, and oil too, for that matter, is basically just a better version of scrolls. So, and also these aren't the most efficient thing to be making anyways. I think this takes pigment, this takes wine. It's not easy to be making scrolls. Usually you don't want to do it. And I don't see too much of a reason to make scrolls, even for Glade event solves, unfortunately. If you get a scroll delivery line, even then I would rather have the incense delivery line or tea delivery line, or even the training gear delivery line than scrolls. I would take the scroll delivery line over ale and wine. And if I had beavers and if I were in, in harpies and I were going to the scar orchard i would still consider taking the scroll delivery line in that case you really want to stick to incense and tea whenever possible and speaking of incense and tea so there's a reason i put these at the top tea is next tea shows up in eight dangerous glade events and six forbidden glade events 
which since it's of the left soul for ancient burial site, I kind of only count it as five forbidden glade events. And it is missing from Forgotten Temple of the Sun, which is interesting. And incense is not missing from Forgotten Temple of the Sun, which is why incense is actually slightly better than tea. So, okay, scrolls and tea are kind of similar, but tea does show up in a lot more forbidden glade events. How are we going to rate the tea? We're going to put the tea into the A tier. The A tier. Because incense is actually a little bit better than tea. So, and also I think easier to make because tea takes crystal dew copper bar to make. It's not the most accessible thing. Like I think incense is actually easier to make usually. Not always, but tea is good. It's not as good as incense. And because it's not as good as incense, it's not going to go into the higher tier. Sad. That's the sad story about tea. But tea overall is a very good resource. And it is something that you want to have on hand if possible unless you have incense. And speaking of incense, incense shows up in nine dangerous glade events, six forbidden glade events, and I don't count it for ancient burial sites. So really only five forbidden glade events out of 14, which is still quite a bit. And you know, nine out of 23 dangerous glade events. So more than one third of them. And this actually shows up on infected drainage mold both sides uniquely. So incense is actually marginally better than even these numbers give it credit for. But I don't consider the left side of drainage mold to be very good, but incense is an option for it. So there you have it. In case you didn't figure this one out, incense, is going all the way at the top of the tier list. This is basically, in my opinion, the best resource. It unlocks a huge amount of solves. It's not that difficult to make. Um, incense delivery line all the way. Can't go wrong, can't go wrong. And this shows up on a lot of very important glade solves. I mean, Totem of Denial, for instance, which you really want to rebuild that and get your three global resolve stacks. Harmony Spirit Altar, same story. And incense shows up on a ton of forbidden glades and it, it's present on pretty much everything. Where tea and scrolls may be missing, incense is almost always there. So incense is very strong and also oil for that matter. So incense is very strong. I consider this probably the most important resource to have for, for opening glade events. Training gear, training gear. This one's a little bit different and I want to give a shout out. I'm not really talking about other things like cash solves and uh, destroyed rain punk drill, etc. that you might find in small glades. I, I thought about putting a side note or some caveat or showing some of the buildings like Homestead, but I'm not really going to talk about those. I think people have a general idea of what you can expect, but I will, I will adjust my tier list accordingly, or I have adjusted my tier list accordingly based on when resources show up in things like caches. So training gear, why am I talking about this? Training gear shows up as a solve for caches, which makes training gear pretty good overall uh, because these numbers don't reflect that. Training gear does show up in three dangerous glade events and four forbidden glade events. Training gear overall, this is, this is nice. It's always the best solve when you have it. I would say always the optimal solve whenever you can use training gear. Um, things like the Fishman Cave, like you don't have too many options. Like you really need training gear, stone or tools. Training gear it, and tools, of course, is like the more flexible option. I do say tools are better than training gear, which is one of the reasons why training gear is kind of bumped down where it otherwise might be higher. So because it competes with tools in a lot of ways, I think you'd almost rather have tools because they are more flexible. But training gear, it is actually pretty good. It is actually pretty good. How good is training gear? Training gear is going at the top of the A tier. This opens caches. Training gear delivery line is very solid. This solves a lot of glade events. Not, you know, compared to something like incense or tea, it's not going to solve as many glade events for you, but it does open the caches. It's very flexible. I think it's actually kind of hard to go wrong with a training gear delivery line some of the time. Let's move on to Ale. Ale doesn't show up in very many glade events. It shows up in four dangerous glade events, but one of those is the Fishman Cave, so I only count it as three. No forbidden glade events. Ale does not show up in forbidden glade events at all. Ale is a pretty bad resource. I don't have too much else to say about it. Ale is going into the C tier. Because it is useful for a couple glade event solves, like it's not you know, totally missing. You can use this. I, I do rate it okay, I guess. Like, it's better than the D tier. It does have a purpose, but I don't have much else to say about it. All right, and also wine. Wine is basically the same thing as ale. It only shows up in three dangerous glade events, and I think it's the same one as the ale shows up in, right? Pretty sure those are all exactly the same, except for Fishman Cave. Uh, wine does not show up in Fishman Cave, but it doesn't matter anyways. Wine does show up in a Forbidden Glade event. It's in, in the left solve for uh, Infected Drainage Mole. I think the right solve is significantly better, so I don't really count wine. I think wine really, I counted as having three Dangerous Glade solves, and that's it. Same as Ale. So you can probably have a good idea where wine is going. The wine is going right below Ale. Not surprisingly, I consider these are basically the same thing. They, If you have them, they will occasionally be useful for, useful for a Glade Solve, but most of the time, these are they're not something you're looking to draft, especially not for Glade Solves, and I would almost never take Ale and Wine delivery lines with me. Next up, we have Resin. Okay, so Resin's kind of an oddball resource, right? Like, in if you're in the Royal Woodlands, you will get to some trees, and this is one of the reasons why I say the Royal Woodlands is an easier biome. If not, I, I, I do say the Scarlet Orchard is the easiest biome, but I think the Scarlet Orchard does require some skill to know how to, to use it, I would say. With the Royal Woodlands, like, there's so many things about the Royal Woodlands that are just kind of easy. Like, it gives you resin from trees, and you have it. And if you open a Glade event, and it takes resin, well, now you have the resin for that Glade event. 
And I, I realized that pretty early on when I was getting into Against the Storm that like you could use the resin and count on the resin for Glade Solves. Um, so okay, it shows up in five Dangerous Glade Solves and three Forbidden Glade Solves. And whenever you see resin as a, as a solve, it's usually the right one. We got five, five out of 23, three out of 14. Uh, if you have resin on hand, it's okay. Like the Forester's Hut, probably you don't need to be drafting the Forester's Hut for Glade Event Solves. Like if you happen to have it for the Crystal Dew, like yeah, you can count that as some value. You can make some resin out of it. And I, I do that sometimes to have an, like 30 resin on hand for a Glade Solve if I have the Forester's Hut. Um, but I wouldn't go out of my way to draft the Forester's Hut just to get resin for Glade Solves, you know, because things like oil and things like incense are going to be way better. But also coincidentally, resin can be turned into incense. So yeah, there you go. So how are we going to rate this one? How are we going to rate the resin, do you think? Resin, resin is going right below scrolls in the B tier. This one's okay because it's free. Like if you have it, you have it. It will show up in some very important ones like, you know, Totem, or not Totem of Denial, actually. Actually, very notably, Totem of Denial does not accept resin. Uh, the Fallen whatever trader, Fallen Beaver traders accepts resin. So, I mean, there's a lot of Glade solves that you can use resin for that are kind of, and not to mention, I think if you get the Haunted Buildings, that's the same deal. And notably, it's missing from Forsaken Crypt, missing from Forgotten Temple of the Sun, where otherwise, like, it takes similar resources like incense and oil. So, oil. Okay. Oil. This is the big one. This is the big one, guys. So, oil shows up in 11 Dangerous Glades, which is, look at the, I mean, look at these numbers. This is huge. Shows up in 11 Dangerous Glades. That's nearly half. Nearly half of Dangerous Glades have oil as a potential solve. Now, of these, I think only nine of them are really relevant. So, okay, that's the modified number. And then for Forbidden Glades, we got six. Six out of 14 except oil and five out of five out of those six are generally oil is fine for the solve. So oil is clearly extremely good. Let's rate it. Where do you guys think oil is going? Oil is going into the S tier creeping in there. There is something rated higher than oil, which you may figure out what that is pretty quickly. But I think oil, if you could bring exactly one resource to a Glade Solve and nothing else, oil is probably honestly your best bet. Oil shows up all over the place for a myriad of different solves. You want this, it makes buildings like the Butcher and the Press and even the Druid's Hut, although I consider the Druid's Hut less good. I mean, it makes them actually kind of considerable because oil alone is enough to do a huge amount of Glade Solves. Unfortunately, there's no ale de or oil delivery line. There is an ale delivery line. It's not a very good one. Some things, to, some things to take note of here, it appears in both sides of Fishman Lighthouse, both sides of Lightning Catcher, even though the right-hand side of Lightning Catcher I don't usually do. Missing from the Forsaken Crypt, which I think takes luxuries, right? Both sides of Altar of Decay, both sides of Rain Spirit Totem, missing from Totem of Denial, best solved. So that is like one strike against oil, is the fact that it's missing from Totem of Denial, the right-hand side. And that's why I count it as one less for the modified here. Uh, Totem of Denial gives you three global resolve stacks. It's a very, very good solve. You really want to be doing the right-hand solve of Totem of Denial every time you see it, pretty much without exception. So I do knock oil a little bit because while you can burn the Totem of Denial down, you don't want to do that. It appears on both sides of Harmony Spirit Altar and it does show up on the right-hand solve for Fuming Machinery, but usually you're going to do the left-hand solve for Fuming Machinery. So that's another reason why it gets docked a point here. And I believe I'm counting the destroyed Rainpunk Foundry as like why you would not need this for, for, for a Forbidden Glade event because it just doesn't matter. All right, tools. Tools show up in eight Dangerous Glade events, of which six are relevant. It shows up in eight Forbidden Glade events, of which six are relevant. So this is actually pretty huge when you look at the Forbidden Glade events, because this shows up in eight out of 14 Forbidden Glade events, which it is more than half. So tools are all over the place in Forbidden Glade events. It's actually the most important thing for Forbidden Glade events, I would say. Uh, it's not so good for the Fuming Machinery, so like you're not going to do the right-hand solve for Fuming Machinery. It's missing from Lightning Catcher and Leaking Cauldron best solve. So the Leaking Cauldron, the left-hand solve, it doesn't take anything at all. And that's what you're going to do for Leaking Cauldron, right? Oh, no, actually you burn it down. Excuse me. You burn it down. So oil is actually the best solve for Leaking Cauldron. But yeah, it's missing from Leaking Cauldron, which is why I dock at a point. And it's missing from Lightning Catcher best solve. Destroyed Rain Punk Foundry as well. I didn't even bother mentioning it because I hate that. I hate the Destroyed Rain Punk Foundry that, just that much. Uh, so anyways, tools. How are we going to rate the tools? How do you think we're going to rate the tools? Uh, tools... We're going into the S tier, not coincidentally, and we've kind of got our S tier out of the way already, probably just because that's how I was sorting these things in my head. But this is what you want to bring to Glade events. So this is the most important thing here. If you're kind of like paying attention a little bit, this is where you got to focus up. Incense, tools, oil. These are what you want to bring to Glade events. This is, if you have these three resources, you're going to solve pretty much everything the vast, vast majority of things you will solve. The things that you can't solve, well, like probably you'll be able to scrape together some resources for it, right? I have to look at some examples here. But Incense, Tools, Oil, this is what you really want, except no substitutes. But Tools does have a lot of substitutes in terms of like pack of building mats and training gear. So if you get training gear and building mats, that's okay as well. And Incense, you can use tea potentially. You can use tea as a substitute. But this is it. Like these are the stone cold nuts right here. Incense, Tools, Oil, 
And if you could have only one of these, you'd probably take oil because oil actually does show up the most. There you have it. There's your tools. Uh, they're very important. Stone. So speaking of alternatives to tools, we have stone. It shows up in two dangerous glade events and four forbidden glade events, which is okay. I mean, it, it does show up in forbidden glade events way more commonly. This shows up in the fishman cave and the escape convicts in dangerous glade events. So stone, it is a nice resource to have. It is a nice resource to have. Let's just rate it. Stone is going at the top of the B tier. This is also used to open caches. So it's pretty nice because you can use this to open caches and it shows up in glade solves. I do rate training gear a little bit higher because training gear shows up in uh, some important glade solves. Totem of denial. Stone does not show up in totem of denial. So I rate training gear higher overall than stone. Take that training gear delivery line. But stone, still a good resource. And getting like plus two to stone production with that cornerstone is extremely good, of course. Pack of building materials. So pack of building materials sh shows up strictly as an alternative for tools, exactly like stone does, except in different cases. So pack of building materials, it shows up in two dangerous glade events, one forbidden glade event. And it's usually just fine. Like whenever you see this, it's actually the correct solve, same as stone usually. So, okay, pack of building mats. Now I'm gonna gloss over a little bit things like planks, fabric, and bricks. And I kind of count those all as pack of building mats because if you have a good brick recipe, then it's kind of the same thing as having a good pack of building mats recipe, right? But this is, okay, so this is specifically talking about pack of building mats. We saw earlier that planks, bricks, and uh, fabric show up four times in dangerous glades and zero times in forbidden. And this is usually a good solve. This it, this does count the merchant shipwreck, which is kind of questionable. But the other three times you see this, it's actually a reasonable solve. And merchant shipwreck, sometimes you do want the left solve. Okay, pack of building mats. How are we going to rate this? And I'm kind of grouping these all together. Like I said, they're all going together as one big cluster. Pack of building mats is going into the A tier. It's going into the A tier right below T. And you can see I've got all four of those icons there. Um, if, you have, if you have good plank recipe, sometimes planks aren't the most efficient thing compared to fabric and bricks in glade events. But nonetheless, planks are very good. If you have the lumber mill, it's going to go a very, very long way for you. And having bricks and fabric recipes to make pack of building mats and also just for the bricks and fabric can show up in glade events quite a bit as well. So overall, I'm not assigning this like individual ratings, but I think Building materials in general, pretty strong. Pretty strong. You you really do want these for other reasons as well. But I, I put them as a solid A tier for doing glade solves. Moving on down to pipes. Pipes. So pipes show up in four dangerous glade events, and I consider only two of them relevant. Uh, it shows up in three forbidden glade events, and I consider only one of them relevant. It's not so efficient for fuming machinery, so that's why I dock it. You, you're usually going to do the left solve on fuming machinery. And it's missing from the leak, leaking cauldron best solve, which is left. That's combustible. And lightning catcher. And I didn't even mention the destroyed rain punk foundry again, but you're not going to use it for the destroyed rain, rain punk foundry either, because that, that's a huge lemon. You don't want it. So, okay. Tool shows up in two dangerous glade events, one forbid glade event, and it's almost always has a lot of alternatives. Like on the merchant shipwreck, it's a little bit dicey because the only alternatives are going to be uh, pipes, parts, and tools. So the merchant shipwreck is like one of the cases where you kind of want it, but then again, like you're hopefully going to be using tools. Hopefully you're going to be using tools, but anyways, pipes, where are we going to put the pipes? Where are we going to put the pipes? Pipes are going all the way at the very bottom. Pipes are going in the D tier. I think pipes really don't show up very often. And when they do, it takes a lot of them. So I would say almost never count on pipes for glade solves. It's not something you're going to draft for. And this takes a lot of copper bar crystal dew just to make these things. I don't like pipes for glade solves. Typically, you're not going to not going to draft for this. You're not going to worry about it. Copper bar and crystal dew. This is an interesting one. And you'll see I have this bundled with reeds and coats, of course, because those show up as alternatives to each other all the time. The bars show up in four dangerous glade events, one forbidden glade event, and reeds and coats. So reeds show up in three dangerous and one forbidden. And reeds always show up as an alternative with coats and copper bar crystal dew. Uh, copper bar crystal dew shows up in one additional glade event, which I think is, it's the one that takes either copper bar crystal dew and the, or amber, and then you have to have like some luxury as well. So it is good for that. It is actually the best in slot compared to the amber. So you do kind of want this one. So coats show up in four dangerous glade events and one forbidden glade event. Of those, I think only three is the best because I'm counting merchant shipwreck is usually the best solve is right. So you don't want the coats for that one, but coats do show up uniquely in the left left hand side solve of merchant shipwreck. So that is that is something in favor of coats. That is a reason why you might want coats. All right, how are we going to rate the coats? How are we how are we going to rate all of these things actually? Let's just put them all on there since these are all kind of related. Let's start with reeds because I think reeds is clearly the weakest of these resources. So reeds. Reeds are going in the C tier. This does show up in a couple of glade events. Like I said, like three important ones that you do want it for, but you've got copper bar, crystal dew, and coats as an alternative. So this isn't strictly necessary. If you have it, it's good. You're not always going to have it. All right. What about copper bar, crystal dew? Where are we going to put the copper bar, crystal dew? Well, this may be a little surprising, but I'm putting copper bar, crystal dew into the A tier. This is my favorite resource to use. It's the most efficient. It only takes, you only have to deliver six of them instead of 30 
uh, when it comes to reads and coats. So it may, may not be the most efficient economically, but as far as making deliveries, yes. These resources, you really do want these for things like the Blightrock Cauldron. It's going to unlock the best solve for you. And you do need one of Copper Bar, Crystal Dew, Reeds, and Coats to make that happen. I put these all the way in the A tier because they are my favorite resource when it comes to doing those Glade solves. And I think you really do want them because it unlocks the best solve. It does have alternatives and there's not too many applications of bars. So I'm really hesitant to put them any higher, but I do think they stand out. I do think this is kind of the best in slot resource for a number of glade saws. All right, and what about coats finally? Oh, all right, we're revealing that one early, it's okay. Coats are going at the in the B tier, near the bottom. Provisions will actually go at the very bottom of the B tier. We'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, but coats are going near the bottom of the B tier. This is not a resource that you need for glade solves, but it does show up in a number of them. If you don't have the copper bar crystal dew, then coats are probably your best option. If you have harpies, like this is why you do want to hold on to your coats at the beginning of the game and not consume them. So if you find like the uh, withered tree, for instance, you're going to want to spend your coats on it. Moving on to amber and provisions. We'll talk about these at the same time. And we already revealed provisions. This is going at the bottom of the B tier. Why? Well, okay, provision shows up in four dangerous glade events and zero of them I consider like best in slot, but I'm being a little bit aggressive with this number actually. I consider, they do actually show up zero times in forbidden glade events at all. Okay, but the thing is they show up with amber three out of four times. So you, you need amber to go with your provisions in order to unlock the solve. But usually on all of those, you can do the left-hand solve instead, and it just gives you a resolve penalty. But you can do the left-hand solve. And I'm talking about things like large destroyed caravan, small destroyed caravan. When you do those, you can do the left solve. So you don't really need provisions, but it later on in the game, you do kind of want them. Because as you get later in the game, you would rather do the right-hand solve and get your victory point out of it than incur a resolve penalty. So it's actually kind of a big deal later on in the game. If you can do the right-hand solve on those Glade events, it's a very good thing. So while I consider these kind of optional, they do have a purpose. And that's why provisions are going into the bottom, very bottom of the B tier. And Amber. So Amber is clearly better than provisions because it shows up pretty much always with provisions uh, and sometimes without them. So it's missing from Fishman Outpost best solve. While Amber is on the left-hand solve of Fishman Outpost, you, you typically want to do the right-hand solve. Same with Fishman Cave, the Dangerous Glade variant of that. And it can be solved for, for free and many Dangerous Glades, which is what I was talking about with provisions on the, the small destroyed caravan, large destroyed caravan. You don't need Amber for the solve. Like, it's nice. And later on in the game, yeah, you do want it if you have it. But it's not strictly necessary. So Amber, where are we going to rate Amber? Where are we going to rate the Amber? I already said it was rated higher than provisions, so... All right. It's going at the bottom of the A tier. Amber is kind of unique in a number of places and it does show up. It is a requirement, actually, if you want to do the right hand solve of the Harmony Spirit Altar. There's a there's a number of reasons why you want Amber going into Glade events. It's not strictly necessary in many cases. Like you can, there's alternatives, but it unlocks a lot of good solves for you. So Amber, I think it does deserve to be in the A tier. It is kind of unique in its own way when it comes to Glade solves. Wildfire Essence. So now we're getting into some more obscure stuff. I guess Coal Marrow, Coal Marrow isn't quite as obscure. Wildfire Essence. This shows up in three Dangerous Glades, but only one of them I, I really think is relevant. It shows up in four Forbidden Glades, but two of them are not relevant. So, you know, Lightning Catcher is one such thing, Destroyed Rainpunk Foundry, and Fuming Machinery for the Dangerous Glade, and Leaking Cauldron, which you're always going to do the left solve. So, Wildfire Essence, it's kind of bad. Like, you know, you're only using this in one Dangerous Glade and two Forbidden Glades. It is kind of nice, like, this shows up in Dark Gate and then the Wildfire, and I do think it's actually the best solve for the Wildfire. So, there is something to say for Wildfire Essence in that way. Okay, but where are we going to put it? Where are we going to put it? Wildfire Essence is going in the C tier, right above Reeds. If you have it, it's okay. This does kind of uniquely show up in a number of cases, but usually the, the thing it really matters for more than anything is the Wildfire Forbidden Glade event. And that's one, only one Glade event. You're likely not even going to see it. And if you have the Wildfire, then that's fine. You may get some extra from a quest. But typically, I'm spending my Wildfire on Hearths whenever possible, not on Glade events. But it is okay. Like, it does show up in a number of places. All right, coal and sea marrow. So both of these, they, they only show up as combustible. So oil is always a strict alternative to this, as is planks as well. Coal and marrow, they show up in seven dangerous glade events and two forbidden glade events. And only five of those dangerous glade events are really relevant because uh, it's better to rebuild the Harmony Spirit Altar and the Totem of Denial. So, okay, coal and sea marrow, like clearly like these have some applications. Oil is going to be strictly better than coal and sea marrow, but coal and sea marrow do have their places. So where are we going to start rating coal first of all? Coal is going to go at the top of the C tier because this does actually show up in a number of glade solves. So if you have it, it's not so bad. The kiln is actually reasonably okay for, for doing this. Sea marrow, because sea marrow is usable in caches and I think a couple other small glade events as well, 
C Marrow is okay. C Marrow actually has kind of like stone. It has a, a number of use cases outside of dangerous forbidden glade events. So C Marrow is, is pretty good. Okay. And we got to the end of the list here. There's a couple things that are missing. The first one is parts. And I didn't bother putting parts on there because it's, it's very similar to things like pipes. Uh, but parts, okay, parts is going at the bottom of the C tier. Why is that? Because it shows up in very similar places to pipes. I think it is kind of a, an alternative, but parts are typically easier to come by. Parts are going to be less expensive when if something takes 30 pipes or whatever, it's gonna take significantly less parts than that. Parts are something you can maybe get a lot of from quests. And our very last thing, containers. I barely talked about containers at all. Containers are generally worthless. I'm trying to think of anything where it really matters. Like you need one of them for the wildfire solve. Uh, there's a number of solves that take containers that are just unnecessary. I think may maybe the lightning catcher is maybe the most important one because it gives a victory point at least. Like you can just do the left solve of the lightning catcher. I think containers are basically useless when it comes to glade events. Like if you have them, okay, but really you're going to spend your containers making pickled goods. You're not going to spend them on glade events. That's the, that's the truth of the matter. So... This is it. This is the resource tier list. I think this actually came out pretty darn solid overall. And the summary, of course, incense, tools, oil, those are your go-to resources. Those are the ones you really want. Uh, training gear, tea, building materials, copper bar, and crystal dew and amber. Like those are kind of the second tier, the things that you want to have additional if possible, because they show up very efficient or in a lot of Glade events as well. And that brings us to the end of our Glade List, Glade List discussion video. If you made it this far, thank you very much. I appreciate your patronage. You can find me on Twitch. I stream Saturday and Sunday, usually and occasionally during the week, or ask me a question on Discord. Uh, I'm angry P on Discord. I, I still need to get my spreadsheet, the recipe spreadsheet, cleaned up uh, and actually <laughs> correct some of the rows on it since the recent changes. I will be doing a video pretty soon to give a summary of recent changes to my other three tier lists for epic, legendary cornerstones and buildings because there's been quite a few changes, just like balance changes in the game and also my opinion on some things has shifted. So I wanna summarize those and, and get those out into a comprehensive video to help keep everyone up to date on the recent changes. If you've been following my stream, of course, you're already aware of them. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then.